Hey, what's going on everybody? I've got a quick video here to explain how to optimize your text editor for writing YAML files. Now, my original plan was to talk about this in the upcoming RHCE video, which is going to be about playbooks, but I thought I could make this its own topic so that the next video could be more focused. All right, so uh, we can go ahead and get started here by working with the Vim editor. And let me just say right off the bat, that Vim does support editing YAML right out of the box, or maybe I should say out of the package. But yeah, like I can open up a file and then just start typing away. Right? So I'd encourage you to play around with the default behavior to see if you like the way that Vim handles it. And if that's the case, then go with whatever you're comfortable with. It's all good. However, if you'd like to try some settings that a large number of other people really like to use for editing YAML, then stick around. That's what we'll be doing right now. So I'm going to create a fresh .vimrc file in my home directory, and I'll open this up. And I'm going to just type in here, uh, set number, and this is going to set the line numbers as default for uh, all of our editing sessions. And uh, next, I'm going to want to type in something like this. So auto command or auto CMD file type in proper case YAML is the file type and then uh, set local and then I'm going to put in some settings like auto indent tab stop equals two and expand tab. So I mean this is mostly self-explanatory but I will explain it a little bit. Uh, this line is going to set some options to the editor when it detects that we're working with a YAML file. So the auto indent is going to save us some tabbing when we go to a new line. The tab stop is supposed to control the level of indentation and we're setting it to two levels. Uh, expand tab is supposed to expand our tabs into space characters, which is really good because YAML parsers really like spaces. And yeah, um, I mean, this does look like quite a mouthful though, but don't worry, we can shorten it down to just AI for auto indent, TS for tab stop, and ET for expand tab. So you might find that easier to remember. Similarly up here, we can just do set number as set NU, and that also works as well. Okay, and I'll also just throw this in here. Uh, some people online recommend setting the shift whip to two. Um, and of course you can also just shorten this down to SW. So uh, this shift with thing is best demonstrated when we actually write our files. So I'll show you a little bit of shifting around and I guarantee you that it will come in handy when you need to fix a lot of indentation all at once. Okay. So uh, yeah, I'll save the file and we can go ahead and test this out. So I'll create a simple example.yml and I'll start writing this out. So I'll, uh, I'll speed this up or I'll be right back. Uh, just in one moment. Alrighty then. Uh, here we are with this little playbook. It's pretty lame, but uh, we might try it at the end just for fun. Uh, what I want to do is just show you how the shift indentation level thing actually works, like that shift with thing that I was showing earlier. So let's say that I wanted to put these two tasks, grab username and print message, into a block, and uh, I'm gonna explain all of these things in future videos, but just bear with me. Uh, I'm gonna create a block here, and I need to indent, I don't need a new line there, but I can indent these uh, so that they fit in the block, all right? So to do that, um, I can just select what I want to indent with a visual mode selection, and from there, I'm just going to do a, uh, greater than sign to move it one indentation level forward. And so if you want to repeat this action, you can just type a period character and there you go. And now for this block item here, uh, I can make it do something sort of useful, I guess. So um, in the block, it'll only happen when uh, birthday is true. Sure. Okay, so now it does something sort of novel, I guess. And uh, likewise, so if you wanted to bring the indentation level back, uh, if you just completed an indentation, you could do an undo with the U key, but um, you could also uh, double tap or just tap the less than character. Yeah, it's a double tap. Um, and this is gonna send you one indentation level back. So that's what I'm doing right now. 
and you can move it forward. Okay, so uh, that'll also work with a selection as well, moving it back. And yeah, there you go. There are those Vim settings in action. Okay, so I'll save this file and we might play around with it in a little bit. But uh, I'd like to also show you uh, a nano.rc or nano dot a dot nano rc file that'll make it easier to write yaml with nano as well so for all those people who like to use nano uh, here you go so nano rc um just dot nano rc and in here i'm just going to type in set auto indent set ab size to two and set tab to spaces Oh, it's actually tabs to spaces, sorry. So yeah, this looks pretty familiar, doesn't it? And yeah, so uh, I can just go and uh, write this out and quit. And if I try to edit some YAML with nano, uh, it's not highlighted, that's kind of a shame, but I should be able to just start indenting stuff and uh, going on my merry way. So like, I could just start typing, and uh, I should make this like a dictionary item, and I can do like my two space indentation, and it works just fine. Okay, so that's really all I wanted to show you, and um, yeah, uh, we can also try to play around with that playbook. So sorry about that. Um, uh, I'll I'll just try to run it, I guess. Ansible dash playbook, if I can spell Ansible correct. Ansible dash playbook. And then my playbook, so I'm going to just do example.yml. Why is it not filling in? Okay. Let's run this and see what happens. So baby's first play, and it says, happy birthday, admin. So that's a marvel right there. It works, even though it was like a kind of a pointless play that I just did ad hoc. Okay, cool. So yeah, that's all I have to show for this video. I hope you like what you saw, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.